Good evening, church family. Thanks for joining in tonight for our live stream of our Lord's Supper together. I know things are a little bit different and a little bit off, uh, but they have been already for the last few weeks. And so uh, we're making the best of what we have and what we can do. And so this is a way for us to try to be to, together to do the Lord's Supper without quite being together. So uh, for me, I've got some grape juice here and some pita bread, uh, but whatever you have around, laying around that you could use for the Lord's Supper, uh, make sure you've got that together and ready to go. You can have Dr. Pepper and a Twinkie. It doesn't matter. Uh, these are symbolic. Uh, this is symbolic of what Christ has done for us as he has shed his blood and his body has been broken for us as he willingly laid down his life on the cross for our sin. And so tonight, uh, as we prepare to take the Lord's table, uh, I do have a few things I'd like to share with you. Uh, three words that stand out to me as I think about the events that surround um, Christ, his, his death and his resurrection, the three words that stand out to me that bring encouragement and hope to me as I, as I see Jesus and I see what he's gone through for us, and it reminds me of, of the great love that he has for me. The first word is the word alone, and I want to read to you from Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. I think about that night that as Jesus was about to face the cross, as he was preparing for all of this that was to come, I think of the aloneness that he must have felt in his life. You know, I think that that's a kind of aloneness that we all feel in the moments of tragedy and sorrow, uh, where there's, you know, we've, maybe we've gone through a lot of suffering or a lot of difficulty. And even though there may be a lot of people around, we feel just alone. And I think this is probably what Jesus felt like in these moments. His disciples were there. Uh, they didn't know what he was about to face. They didn't understand. And I think Jesus just felt alone in the sorrow of his soul, in the suffering of, of, of being alone and knowing what was to come. Another word that I want to give you tonight is forgiveness. In Luke chapter 23, verses 33 through 34, Luke writes here, And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. This passage is very, very uh, strong and powerful here. In this dark moment where Jesus is facing his death, he knows what he, he's about to face. He knows that, that the end is coming soon. Um, as he's being crucified, there are two criminals, one on his left, one on his right. These two men deserve what they're getting. They're criminals. They, they have been convicted of their crimes and they are facing the full punishment for it. But yet Jesus doesn't deserve this. And it's the, these men that are around who have, have caused all that. They have they've crucified him. And even he didn't deserve it. But in this moment, Jesus is not angry. He's not bitter. He's full accepting of what's happening because he knows it's the will of the Father. But in this moment, he cries out, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Such love and forgiveness that we see here that overpowers and overshadows the hatred of mankind. Evil. Even in this moment where it, it thinks it's going to win, it's not because the love of Christ is greater. The last word that I want us to look at tonight is the word sacrifice. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, Peter writes, Knowing that you were ransomed from that futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. 
It's not money. It's not gold. It's not riches that, has per that have purchased our salvation. It is the precious shed blood of Jesus. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, who laid down His life, who willingly went to the cross. And no, none of these men killed Jesus. None of them overpowered Him. None of them went against the will of God. All perfectly aligned with God's will. And Christ willingly submits to this. Jesus even says in another passage that he could have called down legions of angels, which I'm not really sure how many a legion is, uh, but he could have called down a massive amount of army uh, of angels to rescue him. But he doesn't do it. He willingly lays down his life to take the full wrath of God's anger, uh, the full weight of God's wrath upon himself for our sin. He died the death that we deserved. Yet, He took our place. He took the full punishment. And He has paid the penalty of our sin if we're willing to, what Scripture says, repent and believe. As we prepare to take from the Lord's table tonight, I just want to remind you that what we're doing here is symbolic. Uh, we're just celebrating what Christ has done for us, remembering His death, His resurrection, His body that was broken for us, His blood that was shed for us, for our sin. So uh, before we partake of the Lord's table, uh, I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting verses 27 through 29. Whoever therefore eats of the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. So before we partake of the Lord's table tonight, I just want to give you an opportunity to take some time by yourself, individually, uh, and seek the Lord in prayer. Ask Him to reveal to you anything that would be displeasing uh, to Him in your life. And if He reveals those things, uh, be quick to lay them at His feet. Pray, ask for forgiveness, seek His face for those. So uh, we'll be putting some scripture up uh, and there'll be some music, some time that you can reflect and think uh, upon your life and pray. Typically, when we take the Lord's table, I use 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and Paul's instructions to the church on how to take the Lord's Supper. Uh, but tonight, I want to read specifically from uh, the story in Scripture in Mark chapter 14, where Jesus and his disciples gather for the Passover meal, the Last Supper together. 
Mark chapter 14, verse 22. It says, And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. In verse 23 through verses 25, it says, And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, gave it to them, and they all drank it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink it again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to fellowship through communion together. Even though we're in different places and apart, God, uh, you still make a way. And so we thank you for that, God. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us, the body that was broken in Jesus, and what that means to us. That means salvation. That means forgiveness of sin. That means new life and being a new creation in Christ. It means being joint heirs in the kingdom. And so, Father, we... We thank you that your love for us is greater than our sin. And Father, that you have made a way for us through Jesus. Father, I pray that, that tonight as we celebrate communion together, that our hearts look forward to the victory uh, that you've already won in Easter, Father, that we celebrate Easter Sunday morning when you walked out of that tomb, God. We, we thank you that, that you that your love for us was so great, so mighty, so magnificent that, that death could not hold it back. And so, Father, we, we praise you and we look forward to being able to worship together, even apart, God, knowing that you've got everything in your hands and everything under control. And so, Lord, we, we trust in you, our hope is in you, and we thank you for your grace and mercy that comes to us through Jesus. In whose name we pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in as we've celebrated the Lord's Supper tonight together. I pray that you are blessed. And I uh, just want to remind you that uh, our live stream will be Easter Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Tune in through Facebook or YouTube. Uh, make sure that uh, as you're watching and as you're watching the stream, uh, I've also encouraged uh, our folks to put a picture of them of, of, of them and their family for Sunday morning. So uh, whether you're in your PJs or in your Easter clothes or however you want to do that uh, is up to you. But uh, put a picture of you and your family together there on the stream so that we can kind of see each other and kind of be with each other without really getting to be with each other. Thanks so much again. I love you, miss you, God bless you, and we're looking forward to what God is going to do on Easter Sunday.